I'm Larissa Jensen, Vice President and Beauty Industry Advisor at the NPD Group. My name is Tracy Taylor and I'm the Associate Director for Consumer Insights for Fine Fragrance North America at Furmanish. My name is Sophia Gilio, and I am Category Director for the Specialty Business Unit at Mann Fragrance House. Hi, I'm Kelly Mae Cavalier, Director of Customer Marketing for L'Oreal Paris. Hi, I'm Eva Garbos, Director of Trade Development and Communications, Beauty Prestige Group, Shiseido Americas. And we are talking about beauty and technology. We predict that we are on the cusp of the next industrial revolution, the fifth. And we feel that we will be approaching this time by 2040, and a moment um, referred to as technological singularity. Now, technological singularity can be defined by a moment in time where human intelligence will be surpassed by machine intelligence, machines that we ourselves created. Um, we feel that this industrial revolution will be very different from the previous as it has no tangible outputs um, and it's completely cyber and invisible. Um, the good news is, is that we can prepare for this now. Um, aside from building our blockchain strategies, if our companies and brands haven't already, is we can start by upskilling our employees at the same rapid pace as technological advancement in an effort to prepare for this time. And that actually ties a little bit too, again, to the next question. How do the current standards of beauty um, impact the relationship between beauty brands and consumers. Um, I think on the surface, technology has democratized the conversations between big brands and consumers. Historically, beauty brands and mainstream media propagated very white, Eurocentric standards of beauty. It wasn't until the 1970s that African American women could even participate in Miss America. Today, technology has changed the playing field of the beauty industry by facilitating greater representation of players on the field. Um, along those lines, what are the technologies that you feel have the greatest impact on the category as a whole? I think humanity is entering an era where the biological makeup of a human being is no longer the sole requirement of being human. With the interventionist power of technology, DNA is no longer destiny. It's simply a draft that can be edited. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in terms of specific um, technologies, precision medicine, genetics, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, I think uh, advancements in all of those fields will really pressure the beauty industry to one, redefine its purpose, and two, evolve its offering. So I think with technology, we can think about the amount of data collected. I think we did in our research, it's about 79% of data was created within the last five years. So while we become more connected, more data is coming available for all of us to use. And that's gonna allow beauty brands to truly personalize things for the consumer. So whether it be like long comb where you can shade match exactly to your skin, skin tone or some sort of ingestible, which is perfectly made for your own microbiome. There's gonna be an incredible amount of personalization that we feel is gonna come out in the future to kind of interweave the technology with your own self. I think an important point to make here is that while so much of what we're talking about, we talk about in the future tense, the future is really now. And I know that can sound corny in its own way, but when we're talking about, say, cyborgs, which is a term that has come up several times and is defined by part human and part machine, we're already there. We use Google as our memory. We use our digital assistants as our butlers. And they are now a part of us. Our smartphone may, may as well be considered an appendage. So while some of this seems like it's out there and futuristic, it's really not. It's happening already.